Hello, I'm Dominic Damaski, and this is Discovering Inspiration. On this episode, me and my son, Cameraman Cam, travel to Squirrel Hill, a beautiful community in the east end of Pittsburgh, to meet Attila Domos. Attila is a musician, athlete, writer, and entrepreneur. In a twist of fate, Attila suffered a fall that left him paralyzed at the waist the night he signed his recording contract. Mr. Domos is no stranger to adversity, but rather than live defeated, Attila chooses to win at everything he does, from rock and roll to setting world records. Let's meet the man who lives by the mantra and wrote the book, Because You Shouldn't Be Afraid to Chase Your Dreams. I'm the type of guy, like, if I decide to do something, I want to see how far I can push it. I always push the limits. What make, what makes a guy say, I'm going to ride 407.7 miles in 24 hours? Uh, sort of a challenge and a dare or all, all of the above, you know. Uh, nobody in their right mind would want to do it, not in a hand cycle. Did people think you were sadistic when you said, I'm setting out overnight in the dark? Yeah. Uh, they thought I was crazy because I was 48 at the time. So they're like, I'm not at 48. You know, you could do it if you're in your 20s, you know, maybe 30s, not in your late 40s, you know. So uh, basically, I just set out to prove them wrong. That's what it was. It was, it was a challenge. Now, when you're riding 407.7 miles, I got to think, are there, is there a time where you're like, what am I thinking? I'm going to quit. Oh, at quit. least a dozen. At least a dozen times I wanted to quit. If it wasn't for my crew, I wouldn't have made it through. And what would you say to somebody anywhere that, like, let's say I, I've got things going on in my life or you got things going on in your life where people, things get tough and they decide, oh, I'm going to quit. What would you say to them? Oh, I'll just keep going. I mean, you know, life is an adventure. It's not always going to be, you know, roses and you know bunnies and fairy tales i mean there's a lot of ugliness to life so you get through that eventually you get to the little the, the good parts you know the the parts that make you glad you didn't quit <laughs> you, so know? you say that you did it for the challenge yeah and and i get that aspect of it putting yourself sure. out there and things like that but i notice you also talk about accessibility and raising awareness right so is there a part of you that was doing it for that too or would it well, I mean, really a big part is I want to bring um, awareness to hand cycling because not too many people know about hand cycles. Even here in the community where I ride through, people are still like, what is that? Oh my God. Meanwhile, I've been doing it for 10, 11 years, whatever, to about 10 years I've been hand cycling all over the place. So you figure people would know about it, at yeah, least yeah. in Pittsburgh by now. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I do want to bring awareness to all the difficulties that we face uh, anybody in wheelchair really it doesn't matter if you're spinal cord related or MS or you know whatever lands you in the chair uh, life is not accessible it's not and I know there's the ADA is out there and you know it's supposed to make the world a little better and it probably did in some ways but it really still has a long way to go oh here comes the Tula oh that uphill it's killer Water? No, okay. You, you pretty much do it all. Hmm. Rock star, handsome dude, <laughs> uh, hand cyclist. Where, where did you become a rock star? How's that happen? So, I was born in a family of musicians. My mom and dad were both in a symphony back in Romania. So, um, you know, my mom was a second viola first chair. My dad was principal flute. So I grew up around that environment. I mean, I, ever since I could remember. What you gotta do? You got the, you I have the floor. I have no idea what. Uh,
So I see your music everywhere. Yeah, it's if, getting there. <laughs> if you get, so on some of them I see you have like over 200,000 views. Does that freak you out or what do you think about it? It's actually pretty cool because it went from just being a nobody to like, wow, there are people around the world listening to my music. And that's pretty cool. You know, that really is. I, I mean, you know, I have a love-hate thing with technology. Okay. Because sometimes it's great, sometimes it's frustrating. But uh, but it, it allowed, like, this, the little guy to get his music out okay. there. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, that this wasn't the case when I was playing in the late 80s, early 90s. We didn't have all this, you know. So uh, it was just basically the, the big labels had the control of everything. So now a, g a guy or a girl can become famous almost overnight just because right. of the through this you you broke your back mm -hmm. I think everybody watching can see you have a pretty positive disposition about it I do. so did that happen like did that happen right away or did you develop no, that? Or? no 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 well I mean as far as my attitude it's always been this I was always a curious person <laughs> creep no. yeah right <laughs> no no I, but I was always uh, you know that's why I got involved in everything I played many sports I've done many different things in music I, if I see something you know, I take an interest in it and then I want to go try it. Like mm -hmm. I said, I always want to push the limit and see how good I can become in whatever I do. You know, sometimes through the roof, sometimes you fall flat on your face, but at least you know, you know. So that that didn't change, but what happened really, um, you know, initially they be on so many drugs when you're in a hospital and you're recovering and everything and they get you to rehab and there they still have you on like antidepressants and all these other drugs. and you know you can't think straight so I got caught up in this world of poor woe me look uh -huh. at my life blah 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 and uh, you know um, I wasn't focusing on a big picture and that's easy to do <laughs> you know it's easy to get very yeah, right. oh it's all about me look at my life how yeah. terrible and uh, there was this kid Ronnie from Ohio he was there he was a C1 just like Christopher Reeve from the base of the skull okay he had nothing so he and I hit it off, you know, uh, he found out I was a musician, so we talked music all the time and stuff. And, uh, but, you know, I just loved his attitude, you know, so I would, the one day I went into his room just after, I, I had kind of a rough day, you know, so I just went in to see how he's doing. And there's Ronnie laying in bed, kind of like in a weird kind of position, you know, and uh, the ventilator's going, you know, it was the only way he could breathe is the ventilator operating his lung, his lungs. And, um, so I go and I'm like, hey, Ronnie, how are you? And he's, you know, when you speak to a quad of that level, it can be very frustrating because it takes them a long time to get out even one sentence because of the, you know, machine and the fact that they can't fill their own lungs, you know. So it took him like a minute or two to get out. Hey, Attila, can you do me a favor? And I'm like, yeah, Ronnie, what's up? And then it took him another minute. He's like, could you please scratch my nose? And I'm like, yeah, hang on. So I got closer and you know, he like all the snot running down his nose, you know. So I go, I grab tissue and I, I clean him off and, and I'm scratching his nose for him, you know, and I'm just doing that. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. it was like the greatest thing in the world that he's ever felt that sounded like, you know what I mean? And that put me into perspective right there. Boom, I was like, I never felt sorry for myself okay. after that. And you break your back the day you signed the deal yeah well it was at night because we signed a, we signed a contract probably around eight o'clock in the evening it was right before we usually we usually have our rehearsals like from eight o'clock till you know midnight or whenever Jay's mom would come home and kick us out okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so please uh, tell, tell us the story all right so uh, like I said on this night we signed a recording deal around eight and we had a very loose rehearsal it was more of a party you know and uh, so we we're all excited so we were just kind of jamming hanging out we had uh, friends over and it was kind of turning into a little party so we're like well let's uh, you know let's go out and celebrate this thing you know so my brother was working who was our drummer was working at, a, at the uh, Squirrel Hill um, movie theater the one right on Fulbert Avenue off the parkway and uh, so one of the roadies and I went to help him clean up 
um, he was working like as, as a janitor there, you know. So we went to help him probably around midnight. We, we, movies let out and everything, so we went to help him clean up, and so we can all go out and celebrate the signing. And we did. I mean, we cleaned up the place fast. It was like a half hour. We were done. He just had to dust mop the front hallway. So while he was doing that, the kid who was with us found a ladder behind the first screen. So the two of us went up there like, hey, what's up there? You know, let's go check it out. And uh, so on the way back down, I was first to come down and there was a rope hanging from the ladder. And I'm like, wee, rope, yay, all right. You know, so, so I'm on the rope and I, had, I was kind of like in this position, you know, because I had my feet on the ladder and I had the rope. And I literally had to take about three steps down and I felt the rope. And then I reached out real quick to grab the ladder and then it snapped as I was reaching out to grab the ladder. I felt my finger kind of do one of those off the rung. And uh, I just, it all happened in super, super slow motion. And if you've ever been in an accident, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Like time slows down, right? right. And I'm falling and I, I felt like it was dark back there. The only light source was a little dim light bulb that was up in the attic. Okay. And You're making me cry. No, no, no. It's, come on, come on. So, but um, yeah, so the rope snaps and I'm falling down and everything is in super slow motion. And I just, I'm falling backwards, but like I said, I'm very much in the space and, uh, you know, I'm fascinated by planets and solar systems and this and that. So to me, because it was so dark back there and the only source of light in my brain, it was like, I felt like I was falling backwards away from the sun and just like I was flipping back, you know? And that's how I described it in my book. I totally did. And then, I don't know, like a few years later that Sandra Bullock space movie came out where she was like an astronaut or something. And that's exactly what they should. I'm like, did somebody read my book? Because that's exactly how I described it, you know. But uh, so that's what happened. Is is I am, I just remember falling, and I don't know what happened. I just I, I I woke up like my brother was splashing some water in my face, and my head was like like this up against the rung of the ladder. So I started like this, but I ended up with my like the other way. My feet were out the way from the ladder. So obviously I did some flips or at least one flip or something, and. Um, then I was kind of like in and out of consciousness, you know, I just, the next thing I remember is there were a bunch of people in there and lights were on and uh, everyone's talking to me and I had no idea what was, I was totally confused, <laughs> you know, and it was the uh, EMTs in there and I just, the woman kept telling me like, sir, focus, sir, sir, can you please move your feet? And I was so irritated because I was in pain and everyone's talking and I don't know what's going on. So I just remember saying like, I am like really irritated. Attila Domos, yes. you're getting ready to ride across country. Well, that's what we want to make happen. We don't have anything officially yet, but uh, that's that's the next step. You know, we want to do the Trans-American Bike Race. And that's more of a me than a we, because you're not allowed to support crew there. So unlike with Ram, the race across America, where you can have your support team ride with you, and you know, they give you whatever you need as you go. Uh, here, it's just you and whatever you can carry. That's it, so in my case, I got to get in my hand cycle, I got to tie my wheelchair to the back of the hand cycle, put all my stuff in it and pull it with me across from Oregon to either Maryland or Virginia, I forget which, but either way it's far away. How far is that altogether? Uh, I think the route, the way they have it, is around 44 or 4600 miles. Just 4600 miles. <laughs> Some, yeah, yeah. Somewhere around yeah. there. So at that point it doesn't make a difference, right? Yeah, if you go yeah, 44, yeah. you can go 4600. Right. So. <laughs> how, can, how can we support all that you're doing? Your music, your... How, how can we how can we support all that you're doing your music everything uh, oh that's a good question <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I mean obviously, obviously you know you go to my Facebook page and and I don't I'm not huge on the social media because I just don't have time for it you know it's so time-consuming if you're like on Twitter and Facebook and what's the Instagram and I just don't have time for we it need all, you, you know? on all those places <laughs> yeah but I just uh, you know I need I need to hire somebody to do that for me because like I understand why stars hire people yeah. to do that you just 
don't have enough hours in a day, you know. Uh, so I just stick to Facebook basically and uh, you know they can get on there and they can follow along with what's happening and then uh, you know if I need to make any announcements on any such a thing if we end up doing a GoFundMe or whether you know we're hoping to go actual sponsorship you know um, I've been lucky enough to pick up sponsors for all my world record attempts so hopefully they can get back in and you know support this one because what we want to do with it is turn it into a reality show and uh, this gives me a great opportunity to show people around the world because let's face it reality shows now aren't just in America you, you get viewing audiences from all over the world right. uh, I want to show them that a just because you're paralyzed doesn't mean you're useless B uh, I can show them that even in America a place where we do have the ADA it's still not really very accessible it is it's to be able to make it accessible for everyone so we're going to run into problems definitely you will see all the things I have to deal with and the idea isn't go isn't to go out and shame like a hotel owner or anything like that's not the idea that's not the intention and we don't plan on doing any of that but we will show things as they happen as we go along in this journey right. and uh, then I'll be able to show middle America you know as you're going through like Wisconsin or whatever states you're going across there and I'm meeting average Joe's living average lives working average jobs and every day and you know we can just chat and talk about issues that matter to them and then you'll see uh, me talking to city slickers as we go through whatever cities along the way and we'll, you'll see issues that they go through the same thing so basically it'll just be people just following along on this journey you know from the Pacific to the Atlantic There's so many people out there that when they have a setback, they give up. Yeah. Then you've been through a lot, no doubt. What would you say to people out there that maybe they don't think they have the courage to keep going, or maybe they're thinking about giving up? What would you say to them? Don't. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, I think, like I told you before, you know, this isn't reality. This is just the reality we're in right now. And you can do with it whatever you want. It's literally, like if you decide you want to write a book tomorrow, write a book. Like I encourage everybody to write a book. Everybody, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, everybody has a story. Even if you don't think you matter, if you, if, you know, if you don't think that your life is worth living, or that's wrong. You couldn't be further from the truth. You can have a, you have a story that might inspire somebody else. You know, we all inspire one another. Like I don't. I draw inspiration from others. I draw inspiration from when I see somebody doing something fantastic. I'm like, that's cool. How can I do that? Or maybe one up that or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And that's how records are broken. That's how we get ahead as, as, as like a whole civilization. You know, that's why we're not in caves anymore because people kept one upping one another, right? So now we got cool things like airplanes, cameras, you know, wooden decks and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But it all comes from inspiration and, and you know inspiration can come from anywhere the most unlikely source So that's why I tell people write a book write your book You know don't expect to make money from it, but just write it because one it's great therapy It really really is and it's cheaper than hiring a therapist and two Okay, so you might only sell a hundred copies in your lifetime But that means a hundred people read it right yep. and even if you just inspired one person or maybe maybe your story enabled one person to turn his or her men mental attitude around and not commit suicide or or not give up on their goals and dreams or then it's worth it to me it's worth it you know so um, I would say man you got a story so don't end it yet let it end naturally <laughs>
Attila Domos, thank yes. you very much. It was our pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Don't be afraid to chase your dreams. There will be challenges and there will be setbacks, but like Attila proves, you have the tools and the power to overcome them. If you enjoyed the video, please like, please share, and please subscribe.